Welcome back guys, JC here. I know just a few days ago I made a video on what is my favorite build and I went over my favorite build showing you all the parts that I use and everything like that because you guys were asking for that. But it, like I mentioned in that video I'm always changing something up and I think you're going to be pretty excited about this. I also mentioned in that video that I don't just have one favorite build, I have three and all three are exactly alike. But this time I am rebuilding all three and they will not be exactly alike. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, you guys also wanted to know which is better, Beta Flight or Race Flight. You also wanted to know which is better, the Omnibus F4 versus the Race Flight Revolt F4 and the $17 Flip32 F4. You guys also wanted some D-Shot videos with D-Shot ESCs. So I'm going to bring all those videos to you, but through three different multi rotors. That way we will have a great back-to-back -back comparison because the frame and basically everything else will be exactly the same. Now I'm not rebuilding all three in this video. I'm only going to do one. So pick which flight controller you want me to use for this build. The Flip32 F4 for 17 bucks, the Omnibus F4, or the Race Flight F4. Oh, the Race Flight Revolt F4, I should say. Well, time's up. You're too slow. I'm going to use the Omnibus F4 for this build. I know it's pretty boring because I already have so many Omnibus videos, but uh, I still have to do my review for both of these, as well as how to do this and that and set up Race Flight and all kinds of stuff. Which, by the way, even the Flip32 F4, I will be using Race Flight on it instead of Beta Flight. So I've got my D-Shot ESCs ready. Got my PDB some wire, all of my hardware ready to go, XC60 connectors, a bunch of candy to keep me occupied. So let's do it. As far as motors, uh, I will be reusing the same motors. They are T motors, but uh, ReadyMade RC sells them and just rebrands them as their own brand, but uh, it's actually a T motor. Like I said, I would like to use the T motor F40 motors uh, I'm just waiting on these to burn up, but they don't want to die. They just keep going and going and going. I've been using these forever. But that's the great thing about T-Motor. High, super high quality motors. The ESCs are the... I chose to go with the 30 amp Super Racer B BL Heli S V2 with the D-Shot ready option, meaning the cap has already been removed and uh, the firmware flash. These do also apparently have LEDs built in, which I plan on turning off because I don't care for LEDs. Yeah, you can see the LEDs right there. They're rated from 2 to 6S LiPo with a 40 amp burst rating for 10 seconds. I'm not going to go over all the specs. You can check it out if you want. I am not recommending this ESC. I have never used this ESC. This is my very first time, so just keep that in mind. Uh, they could be bad. They could be good. I don't know. We'll find out. I'll... I'll do a review later. Alright, I got the ESCs on and I just want to point out so far I love how large these pads are. They give you some really big pads uh, to place your wires on. Not only are the pads large for the motor wires and the wires coming from the PDB, but also the pads to your uh, signal wire and ground wire are also large. These are the ESCs that I just took off. Look how much space you have. Like, the pads are almost non-existent, and I can't stand that. Not only are the pads super small, but they are right next to these chips, and I'm always afraid of, like, melting them or something like that. I should also mention that I don't crisscross any of my wires. I reverse the motor direction through the BL Heli Suite, so, and, and that's what I'll be doing. Next is the PDB. Uh, the PDB I like to use is, well... It's not a specific one, just any simple PDB. Like nothing to it, no voltage regulators, no filters, no nothing. The reason for this is because, for one, I like mounting all of my PDBs just flat on the frame. Uh, I always put electrical tape on the back side. This PDB is especially safe. Like some of them do have pads on the bottom. That's where the electrical tape comes in. But even ones like this, you might be able to see these tiny little holes. And sometimes the solder can run through those holes, so I just put electrical tape on all PDBs just to be sure, because carbon fiber does conduct electricity. That gives me something like this, and I'm just going to trim off the uh, edges. 
And now that gives me something that looks like this. You would never know that there is electrical tape on the back. Now, like I said, I do this on all of my builds. I just like keeping things as low and flat as possible. But I especially do it on this frame because the PDB mounts here. And then they give you this uh, silicone or gel tablet thing that goes into the back side and your battery mounts on the bottom. So if you have a PDB with standoffs separate, separating it from the frame, then this gel pad wouldn't have anything to attach to. It would actually be recessed into this hole and then there would be no point in even using it. So long story short, a PDB like this with a bunch of crap all over it and on the bottom side is not going to work. You need one with a flat bottom. Alright, now I've got the power and ground wires from the ESCs going to the PDB. Now you can see another reason why I like using PDBs like this with this pad layout. It just makes things super clean and simple. As far as the gauge of wires that I'm using, uh, my general rule of thumb is if I'm using 30 amp ESCs, I use 18 gauge wire. If I use 20 amp ESCs, I use 20 gauge wire. One question that people give me all the time is, what do you do with the small ground wires coming from the ESCs? Because some people remove them completely, some people uh, run them you know, to the flight controller like you're supposed to. Some people even run them to an LC filter. This is just how I do it. I run the ground, the small ground, from the ESC. I twist it around my main ground wire going to the ESC and then I put it on the same, uh, well it doesn't have to be the same pad on the PDB, just any ground on the PDB, that's where I place it. So I don't know if you can see, but I've got all four of my small ground wires soldered on and bringing to a ground on the PDB. Doesn't really matter where. And that's just personally how I do it. As far as the XT60 connector and those wires, my rule of thumb for that is you at least want to use the same gauge wire that your batteries use. So for example, these are 14 gauge wires on this battery. Some batteries use 12 gauge wire. So what I do is I just go ahead and put 12 gauge on the XT60 connector. Uh, but it's up to you. Now you probably noticed from the beginning of the video I already had my LC filter mounted. Just a few quick things on that. I use the uh, ready-made RC Cricut video transmitters. They, they filter the power extremely well. You don't even need an LC filter with that video transmitter. Now the reason I already had it on this board is because, like I said in my other video, I like using these flight controllers with the built-in voltage regulator and normally you would just run wires directly from the PDB to the flight controller and that's what powers it. But with OneShot 125 uh, ESCs with the uh, active brake damping turned on or multi-shot and D-shot ESCs, basically multi-shot and D-shot you can't turn it off, it's always on, but with multi-shot and one shot 125 with it turned on, you do get those somewhat harmful voltage spikes that can and has been known to fry components. I've never had that personally happen to me, but after seeing it happen to so many people, that's when I started using LC filters and using that as my protection. So instead of powering my flight controller, running the power and ground right off the PDB to the flight controller, what I would do is uh, run power and ground from the PDB to the LC filter in and then on the outside I would power my video transmitter and run an additional power and ground to the flight controller. Now I have removed those wires and I will be powering this flight controller right off the PDB because these D-Shot ESCs supposedly don't have those harmful voltage spikes. But even if you have multi-shot, I've never had it happen to me but I guess it does happen. But like I said, as far as this video transmitter, you don't need an LC filter. Not at all. Okay, I've got the XC60 connector on now. Like I said, I use 12 gauge wire, and what I like to do on this frame is butt it up against the PDB and solder it on like that. Uh, not to worry because the battery on the bottom has not more than enough uh, reach to wrap around and plug in. Uh, I find doing this this way, uh, it doesn't rip the XC60 connector off. It also keeps your wires nice and short. I went to mount the flight controller and there was a JST connector on the bottom of it hitting the XC60 connector. Now I could use longer standoffs but I don't want to do that so instead I just removed the JST connector. Not only did I remove that one but I removed all of them because I won't be using any of them. Alright I got the flight controller installed. Now a couple things I want to mention. 
First, notice how all of my wires, especially up here, are running on the inside of these standoffs. These are going to help prevent uh, any wires being pulled out from tree branches, stuff like that. For the signal wires, I ran them underneath the fly controller and soldered them on the bottom side. Uh, it's just another pet peeve of mine. As far as powering this, this is the Omnibus Pro, meaning it does have the built-in current sensor. But I'm going to be honest with you, I hate current sensors. Well, current sensors, period. Uh, at least on builds like this. I, per, this is just my opinion. I find them completely useless. I do use current sensors on my large hexacopters and octocopters, uh, my GPS builds, but on these, I see no point whatsoever. The only thing worse than a current sensor, at least to me, is a current sensor built into the fly controller. The only reason I bought this fly controller was because you guys requested so many videos for the pro versions of the Omnibus, but honest to God, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. With these, with the current sensors, you were supposed to run the XC60 connector and main battery leads to the flight controller first. So imagine having a 14 or 12 gauge wire, uh, the positive run here, and then the like the really fat ground run underneath, and then you have to run another really fat, you know, 14 or 12 gauge wire from the voltage out here, then to the PDB. And same for the ground. Screw that. I am not about that life. Uh, but once again, that's just me. But yeah, doing that with a fly controller that has the current sensor built in, you're going to have two fat positives and two fat negatives. Uh, and it's not going to be nearly as clean as this. I mean, the way I see it, why wouldn't you just use a PDB with the current sensor built in? And it has a signal out wire, and you just run that signal wire to the current pin on any other fly controller. And there you go, you have current. And you run the battery, the XC60 connector and main battery leads the same way you would on any other PDB. It's no different. So that's just my opinion on that. Now I can still use this fly controller just like an F4 Omnibus, uh, like I showed you in the how to power video. All you do is just run one skinny little wire right off your PDB to the voltage in, and then run another skinny ground wire to the ground on the bottom side of the fly controller. I doubt you can see it, but it's there. So I will use this as if it were just the normal F4 Omnibus. And the last thing I wanted to mention was you can see my standoffs have just enough room for these tiny little uh, black nuts to screw on. Normally, if I could get away with it, uh, I would place these O-rings underneath the fly controller, in between the standoff and the fly controller, then put the fly controller on top, and then screw the nut down. That's going to keep vibrations out your gyro. But I don't have enough room for that, so uh, I'm going to have to make do. At least until I can run to the store and get some longer bolts. After I get some longer bolts, then I'll come back you know, off camera and put the O-rings on. What I've done now is mount my XSR receiver right on top of the fly controller with double-sided tape. I then remove the plastic connector and direct soldered my wires right to the pads and then soldered those to the fly controller. Uh, I've got S-Bus, ground and power. I, I will not be using telemetry. Uh, if you've seen my video on how to connect the XSR or X4 RSB to the F4 Omnibus boards, uh, then you would know that the, the board doesn't have the hardware required to invert the signals for the UARTs. It does have one inverter for the S-Bus signal uh, now you can get telemetry, just watch those videos. I, I don't feel like doing that modification that I showed you to get telemetry. So, Plus I really don't care about telemetry because I just use an on-screen display. As far as the built-in on-screen display, I just uh, wired in my uh, video wire from the camera, video wire from the video transmitter. I am not using the power and ground pins on the flight controller, uh, just like I mentioned in my uh, video on how to wire in the on-screen display. I don't use the power and ground off the board. I use my separate, actually I'm using power and ground from LC filter. But you don't even have to use LC filter, you can get ground and power right from your PDB instead. Uh, anywhere is gonna be better than off of this board. Or at least flight controller, I mean. And just to wrap things up, uh, put the top plate on. The video transmitter, which is the uh, ready-made RC Cricket, has ears on it, which allows you to mount it to the top plate. One thing I always do is remove the SMA connector. I know it's hard for you to see, but 
the SMA connector is removed. Uh, I have a video showing you how to do that. And then I just direct solder RG178 coax cable from the SMA connector or the bulkhead, whatever you want to call it, to the board on the video transmitter itself. I just use some 20 gauge wire, wrap it around twice, and then uh, solder the tips together, giving me these little, I don't even know what you call them, straps, which allows me to, uh, you know, I use my own homemade Kydex case. I'll make a video showing you how to make these. And I just run a strap through those little cables, and that's what I use to mount my uh, Hero Session camera to. I do shorten my antennas so that they are just barely coming out the top plate through a couple little holes drilled in the top plate. I don't use antenna mounts or anything because they always break. Uh, not to mention, the XSR is not going anywhere between it being stuck to the flag controller and direct soldered to it. So therefore these antennas can't come out, therefore they cannot get cut by the propellers. Uh, they don't ever get broken or what I'm trying to say is they never get damaged, so I don't use antenna mounts at all, not on this frame. I mean, hell, whenever I crash, the session is going to hit first, or the antenna, but these antennas are completely protected. The camera on this build is the Runcam Owl, but uh, I also like to use the Foxier HS1177. I like the Owl Plus more in the evening, the HS1177 during the daytime. Uh, they're both great cameras. If you do decide to purchase this frame, just know that this camera mount does not come with it. You have to buy that separately, but I do highly recommend it. It's great. I've had zero problems with it. You can adjust how much tilt you want on the camera and then just tighten up the screws on the side and that sets it where you want it. Last thing I have to do is uh, wrap up my ESCs, but that's actually going to be the next video. I'm going to talk about ESC protection. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.